RS3 economy and just how crazy it is. Party hats are increasing in price by hundreds of millions per day. The Blue Pi hat has seen an increase of 30 billion GP in two and a half months. Making it the most expensive single trade in the history of RuneScape. Which obviously is getting inflated by people owning the market and basically dictating and upping the price of every single trade. In May of 2020, the price of the discontinued rare still available on the Grand Exchange started to spike at a rate like never seen before. After nearly two decades of slowly building their value from worthless to hundreds of millions, the prices shot through the roof in a matter of months, some surpassing the grand exchange limit of 2.1 billion coins, and fell right into the hands of the rich elite, where the price is no longer regulated by the game's economical systems. But what happened that caused such a tremendous increase of value? And what is Jagex really doing about it? In this case, it all started with a single merchanting clan. Though there are many somewhat private clans in the game that focus on increasing the price of items, this particular one consisted of about 40 incredibly rich players who decided to spend their wealth on holding a large quantity of discontinued rares. Mainly party hats and crackers, items whose wealth is far above the grand exchange market value, and that are mainly traded on the RuneScape forums. Pushing the price up was easy. Because of the insane wealth held by the players, and by association being attractive targets for hijackers, their money would be split on a large number of shill accounts, used for two purposes only, to hold wealth and to trade with each other on the forums. You'll notice it easily if you ever surf the forum threads. Accounts with no profile picture recently made members to surpass the total level requirement for free-to-play accounts. Hardly any other post-history, selling rare items for absurd amounts of money. And the price keeps increasing for every trade. Manipulation was easy, but with party hats alone, the number of items to manipulate were limited, and increasing wealth was lower than it could be. RuneScape has 15 tradable discontinued rares from the very early days of RuneScape, items that there were few of in circulation, that players wanted their hands on as a status object. But at the time, only 7 of them were being actively traded in the merchanting community. The others had for a long time remained rather low in wealth on the public market, making them less attractive to the rich elite, simply because they wouldn't make them as much money. But a smaller portion of the merchanting clan saw potential in those cheaper rare items. Items only worth a few hundred million, that would have to reach the maximum value on the grand exchange to truly be worth something in the end. And with the combined wealth between 9 of RuneScape's richest players, that didn't seem so unrealistic. Over the summer in 2020, this small group of walking moneybags started buying out the rares on the GE. Mainly the oldest rares, but some of the more recent rares were added into the mix. Some made it through, becoming insanely expensive over a few weeks. Other items failed, crashing once the merchants decided they weren't worth the effort. Massive stacks of items were being bought at one price and sold higher, repeated until the prices eventually, but quickly, surpassed the max stack in the grand exchange. The increase didn't go ignored by the community. Reddit threads popped up constantly questioning the price spike, wanting Jagex to step in to deal with the clear price manipulation. In a live Q&A in August of 2020, Jagex recognized the issue, saying they might look into the idea of introducing a secondary money system, such as platinum tokens, to trade above the max stack of coins. However, besides this comment, nothing was done to the prices that kept increasing. Between March of 2020 and January of 2022, the blue party hat had gone from a value of 23 billion to 150 billion, making a price increase of 8 million GP an hour. Other attractive items like the red Santa hat, which at the same time in March was worth 863 million, was in January 2022 sold for just under 4 billion coins. The price increase did of course benefit a lot of legitimate players too. One person merchants lucky enough to own a set of rare items prior to the clan's involvement made a lot of money, and some would continue to earn absurd amounts as a result of it. But one could wonder, what do the players do with all of their money? The clan initially responsible for the price increase went through with it for a handful of reasons. One being simply wealth. The idea of being rich is an attractive thought. The idea of being even richer is better. Some would make money with the intention of collecting items, using their fresh piles of coins to buy massive stacks of useless items, creating some of the most impressive item collections the game has ever seen. 
And of course, as you likely guessed, some would increase their wealth with a desire to real-world trade, and did so seemingly undetected. Buying gold is obviously against the rules, and Jagex has a pretty complex system in place to track gold obtained from websites offering such services. When a gold farmer is reported in-game, Jagex will be able to trace the account to see where they're trading, with each trade laying a cookie-crumb trail all the way to the buyers, creating a large web of buyers and sellers. The old-school video maker Chrome recently conducted an interview with an owner of such a website, who said a whole 30% of gold offered by real-world trading services are provided by normal players, some of which don't want to risk getting banned when selling the gold they have. And considering just one report is enough to lead Jagex's ICU team straight to their virtual doorstep, they had to find a way to transfer their gold without directly interacting with a real-world trading website representative. The grand exchange comes back into play here. The Shill account, being the account without any ties to the wealthy players selling gold, would scour the grand exchange for items not being traded by anybody. The type of item where if you put in an offer at 10 million coins, it's still not buying simply because nobody is selling them. The account will then go through a process of obtaining the item, let's say for example a ranging mix one. They obtain about 20 of each item and put it for sale on the grand exchange for 10 million GP apiece. The wealthy player will then put in a buy offer for the same item at the same price, buying 20 of the item and essentially transferring 200 million GP per stack of items to the mule account, completely hidden behind the innocent look of just an expensive trade on the grand exchange. Now, sure, it might look a bit weird that somebody would buy a range mix for 10 million coins, but keep in mind this isn't unusual. Players constantly buy cheap items for absurd amounts of money just to make sure they get it quickly. Quest items that are rarely used are a prime example of just that. And because they trade the items for relatively low sums at the time, it seems their method wasn't flagged in any of Jagex's systems. Now, clearly, I wouldn't be telling you how to real-world trade. Jagex is obviously aware of the method, and I've done my part to ensure sharing it won't do any damage to the game's integrity. But the best part is that even if the rule breakers continued to use the grand exchange in their schemes, there is a fun way for you to make some money. As mentioned, the real-world traders would use items not being traded on the GE in an attempt to transfer their gold. To check if any of these cheap items are being traded, they usually put in a buy offer for about a million GP. Meaning, if you obtained a handful of some of these items and put it on the GE for sale for, let's say at 500k a pop, you'd quite possibly take a bit of their money over time. It shouldn't be up to the players to halt the business of real-world traders, however. Jagex has made various attempts in the past to fight the problem. In 2013, Jagex revealed 170 billion coins were sold every day, where the buyers consisted of well over 40% of the active player base, and introduced bonds as a way to combat this, essentially allowing players to buy gold through Jagex instead. Ironically, this created some other problems for Jagex down the line. When Jagex attempted to sell RuneFest tickets and hotel rooms with bonds for their annual event, the Gambling Commission stepped in after the psychologist and expert within gaming addiction Mark Griffiths found that not only is Treasure Hunter gambling, but due to the possibility of buying real-life goods with bonds, it added an official real-life value to in-game coins. This meant Jagex were on the verge of having to apply casino regulations to RuneScape. Jagex responded by removing both the option to use in-game currency to buy hotel rooms, as well as the Well of Goodwill, making gold return to being, legally speaking, worthless in the real world. Anyway, in October of 2021, Jagex announced the removal of the Duel Arena next to an announcement about real-world trading, saying due to their success in dealing with gold farmers, they would now start targeting gold buyers as well. There has however been no mention of the price manipulating since their Q&A in August of 2020, but that doesn't mean Jagex are ignoring the issue. Recent items like the Golden Party Hat and the Green Santa Hat shows Jagex are introducing items similar to these extreme rarities, allowing every player the chance of getting their hands on alternative variations. This changes the demand for the expensive versions where less regular players would feel the need to purchase an expensive edition when a cheaper one is available to them. The community have proposed alternate methods of dealing with the issue, such as removing them entirely or re-releasing them to the game. They do however carry a legacy in the game. Like skill capes, the classic party hat is iconic in the game and is a part of what defines RuneScape to be the game that it is. This is especially underlined by Jagex releasing the Golden Party Hat as celebration for the game's 20th anniversary, an item that will, by the way, most likely also be manipulated once the dust settles around them. 
Re-releasing these items would definitely make the price crash, but so would their status in the game, making them less desirable overall. The recent reintroduction of the zombie walkie mode is an example of this, where the price not only crashed, it also went from looking fashionable to becoming an annoyance in the community. A decision of this size would also likely encourage the rich players to invest in a different item instead, maybe pick back up the fish mask where they left off last time. When Old School introduced the Grand Exchange in 2015, they called price manipulation scamming, suggesting doing so would lead to action taken on your account. Considering both games share the same set of rules, I would assume RS3 shares the same morals. But Jagex seems to be in between what rules to act on when it comes to what they classify as scamming versus real-world trading. Jagex realizes the old rares are being traded back and forth between a small group of players, but at the moment they're combating the demand for the rares instead of the manipulators themselves, despite their 2015 statement of manipulation being scamming. Not before a player might decide to sell their items for real-life money did Jagex step in and apply proper action to their accounts, as promised in the 2021 article. Ultimately, this means the number of party hats in the game should be decreasing faster now than ever. Assuming Jagex truly permanently bans accounts that real-world trade, I wouldn't be surprised if a few of these bans include accounts holding a variety of rare items. The question is if those news will affect the fragile rare item prices, and in return make them even more expensive. The psychology of rares in the game is extremely fascinating this way. The purple party hat was for nearly two decades the cheapest party hat due to the duplication glitch in 2003, despite Andrew Gower sharing the fact that there were less party hats in the game after the dupe than there had been a year prior in 2002. The yellow party hat became the cheapest one in 2020 after rumors of a new duplication glitch. However, despite Jagex admitting there had been a dupe of coins, they also said in a livestream that the number of yellow party hats in the game were the same that it had been two weeks prior to the supposed dupe, suggesting the rumors of additional rare items were nothing but just that, a rumor. The point is that rares are currently being monopolized by a small group of players, which is very clear on how quickly the prices are affected when this group of players respond to various rumors in the community. And until Jagex decides to directly act upon the manipulators, the prices of the current rares will likely continue to increase. But for now, it seems they're keen on meeting the demand by the general community and introduce similar but cheaper versions. Like several players before me, I'm guessing the Halloween mask is likely the next in line. Do let me know what you think about the situation in the comment section below. I'd love to hear some good ideas on what should be done about the rares in the game. For now, I'm gonna go enjoy the only rares I was ever able to buy, my friends. <laughs> my name is Will Miss It, and I'll see you all later.